Hi everyone, today we're taking a deep dive into Pika Labs, the AI video generator that as of now you can use for free. Pika has recently updated with a few new features that I think are real game changers and elevated up to a pretty remarkable level. So today we're gonna take a look at the platform as a whole. We're gonna go over best practices for prompting as well as every command that you can possibly use in Pika. And I've got some advice from some other Pika power users to pass along to you as well. All right, and on that note, let's dive in. So starting from the ground floor, Pika is an AI video generator in which you can either use text or image prompts to generate video. Those videos will be about four seconds long and run at 24 frames a second. Pika is Discord based. There's a link to join the server down below. Once you have joined, you'll find a number of generation rooms over here in creations. Simply join one of those. And when you're ready to start prompting, you simply come down to the text box and hit forward slash create. Alternatively, you can now message the Pika bot uh, who will then slide into your DMs acting as sort of a private generation room. The way to do this is if you come up to the right-hand side of the screen, um, possibly the member list might be hidden for you. So just make sure that hide member list is not toggled on. Uh, the Pika bot will be in the top right corner. Simply right-click and then message the bot. That said, if you're just getting started with Pika, I almost kind of recommend hanging out in some of the generation rooms, at least to start with, just so that you can kind of get an idea of what Pika is capable of. Generally, I've found that most people in the generate rooms are actually very friendly. If you're running into trouble, they are more than willing to help you out. And if you have a question about how they accomplish something, they're usually willing to give you some tips and pointers. Prompting in Pika can be broken down into three areas. You have text prompting, you have image prompting, and then you have your perimeters. We're gonna get into image prompting in just a minute, but I wanted to start off with some basic text prompting. As you can see, the prompt structure here would be forward slash create, followed by a description of the video you want to create, followed by the perimeters. And we'll be also be going over all the perimeters very shortly. So as I always say, when it comes to prompting, there is no right or wrong way to prompt. That said, I do think that there's certain information and kind of a structural style that does help the AI bot parse the idea that you're looking for. Again, none of this is set in stone. This is just sort of how I visualize a prompt. Uh, beginning with medium, that would be something like cinematic film, uh, 3D animation, 2D animation, etc. Style, you might actually think of as genre. I feel that Pika responds fairly well to that. So in this case, action film, drama film, maybe even sci-fi film. Style by and then including a filmmaker, I find does not actually have that much weight in Pika. Style by and then dropping a filmmaker's name tends to be a little less effective in Pika, much like how in Mid Journey, if you name drop, say, Quentin Tarantino, you're likely to get someone that looks like Quentin Tarantino in your output. Uh, the same goes for Pika. Scene describes who your character is and what the location of the scene is, while action describes what that character is doing or what is happening in the scene. Modulate, the final area, is something that I like to think of as token keywords that will affect everything that came before it. So these are for atmospheric type effects like rain, fog, even lighting, horror film lighting, sci-fi lighting, that sort of thing. So let's take a look at two just straight text prompts and see how they come out via Pika. So beginning with cinematic, medium shot, crime film, a man wearing a black suit in, I forgot to put A, in New York diner, uh, drinking coffee, 1960s aesthetic, we get this. And this is not bad. I actually kind of like it a lot, um, although it is weird that he's chewing gum and drinking coffee at the same time. I will say overall, it definitely leaned into the 1960s aesthetic and has kind of a like Rat Pack kind of vibe to it. Whereas in the initial prompt, I was kind of thinking more like a Martin Scorsese film. So I wanted to play around with an exterior establishing shot uh, that then we could lead into the inside of the diner with our bubblegum chewing, coffee drinking uh, mobster. So uh, I rolled this up, which I thought was actually hilarious because it's a diner named Crime. It's a terrible idea for a secret hideout for gangsters. As another example, this is cinematic still, dramatic film, close up, a young fisherman on a boat looks longingly at the woman he loves, smiling, rain falling. 
yes, I believe in the power of love. What, you want to fight about it? So anyway, we end up with like Jonah Hill and a young Sandra Bullock, which is a very strange movie. Now I will say it will take you a number of re-rolls to get a decent output. Uh, for example, this is another one that we did with the same prompt uh, that did not come out so great. Or this one, which actually works really well in terms of what I was looking for, if not for that weird woman lurking in the background. She's a real mood killer back there. I think her name's Becky. While I will say that obviously image prompting is kind of the OP powerhouse of Pika at this point, you can still get some really interesting and cool stuff out of straight text prompting. I think it works particularly well when you're asking for kind of nature overhead aerial shots or something like this, which I picked up from the Door Brothers. The prompt here was uh, painted style by Van Gogh. A man sits on a train looking out the window as the countryside passes. Um, this was something that looks really, really nice natively within Pika text prompting. When it comes to text prompting in Pika, there are a number of called shots that you can try out. Uh, this is a list of shots that have been known to work within Pika. And as a quick FYI, you don't need to screenshot this or hurriedly write it down. Uh, all of this is available in a free PDF that is over on Gumroad. The link is down below. That said, if you would like to leave a donation, it is highly appreciated, especially considering I'm still dealing with the stupid YouTube invalid traffic bug, which means YouTube's probably only gonna give me like $1.87 for this video. Finally, Patreon and YouTube supporters, you guys already have this PDF. Okay, moving on, let's go check out image prompting. So image prompting, obviously as the name implies, allows you to upload an image that Pika will then use for contextual clues and inspiration in its output. So I will say that image prompting is not necessarily the most intuitive, but you do get used to it very quickly. Uh, you simply forward slash create, and then once the prompt box comes up, you'll see this plus one more, just click that, and then the option for image will be here, click that, and now we can upload an image. Dragging it into Pika, we still have the option to text prompt as well. That said, because a lot of our contextual clues are already in the reference image, we don't need to spend a lot of time describing the character, the setting, that sort of thing. We can really just sort of concentrate on action by simply saying the man looks up and smiles and running that as a prompt with our image prompt results in this, which is pretty good, um, uh, smile. I think that whoever he's smiling at is not going to be making it to the end of the movie. So sure, I do think that the mid-journey assisted image prompted outputs probably look a little more aesthetically pleasing than the straight text outputs. But again, there is kind of a neat charm to the fully text generated versions. I mean, it is all just sort of what you're looking for. I should add that there is also a new animate feature. You just forward slash animate, and then you can drop any image in. This is a mid-journey Batman image that I just rolled up and just rolling in a straight animate, we get this. Uh, it appears Batman's just standing on a rooftop muttering to himself because he is a crazy person that dresses up like a bat and beats people up in the middle of the night. He is a crazy person. We are gonna spice that Batman animation up as we hop into the next section on commands. Big thing to keep an eye out, especially if you're a mid-journey user, when you are issuing commands in Pika, that it is one dash followed by the command parameter, unlike mid-journey's dash dash. So Pika now outputs natively at 24 frames a second. So taking this, which is an image reference from a thumbnail that I never ended up using, uh, it's kind of a cyberpunk robot, and running that through Pika standard, we get this. So it's a little on the wonky side with the arm, but it'll serve as an example. And now here it is with the command dash FPS 10, so 10 frames a second. You'll also note it's not the same video. There is a way that we can do that via seed. Uh, we'll get to that in just a minute. So next up is motion, and this obviously controls the amount of motion your overall video has. Uh, the default is one, and you can control it from zero to four. So zero if you want no motion in your video output, or four if you want a bunch. Surprisingly, you can now get some pretty good results maxing out motion to four. Uh, Pika previously would get pretty wild if you crank the knobs up that high, but this is our fisherman couple in love once again uh, with a motion of four, and yeah, it looks really good. Our guidance scale, which is issued with dash GS and runs from eight to 24 with a default value of 12, controls how much 
Pika is listening or relying to your text prompt. We'll have some advice on the guidance scale sweet spot coming up pretty soon, but as a general spoiler, uh, it seems to be around 12 to 15. Next up is negative prompting. And I think this is actually a pretty big deal in Pika. Uh, in order to issue a negative in your prompt, it would be dash NEG for negative, followed by a quotation mark, all of the tokens you do not want to see, and then closing it out with a quotation mark. The negative prompts that seem to work well are kind of in that older stable diffusion style. Uh, I do in the PDF have an example of a pretty good base negative starter, which includes ugly, blurry, deformed, multiple limbs, pixelated, static, fog, uh, cartoon, vector art, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then you can use that as sort of a base to add and subtract depending on what your needs are. So applying some of these concepts, this is a mid-journey image that was then brought into Pika with the prompt, woman takes a deep relaxing breath, wind slowly blowing hair, uh, blowing in the wind with a motion of two, we get this, which I think is actually pretty good. But now let's see what happens if we add our negative prompt to it as well. So rerunning the same prompt, only adding in the negative prompt as well, we get this, which I think is a lot more coherent and stable. Aspect ratio, which is a concept I'm sure all of you are familiar with, uh, is just simply dash AR followed by, you know, the number colon number. Uh, now this only really applies when you're doing a text prompt. If you're doing an image prompt, uh, Pika is just going to take the aspect ratio of your input image. Seed, which is dash seed followed by the number, uh, doesn't really operate the same way you probably think it does if you're used to working with seeds in mid journey. When you're working with a seed in Pika, you can't change your prompt nor your negative prompt. Uh, so for example, with our woman taking a cleansing breath uh, here, we couldn't change the background to be high noon in a desert. Now I should say you can try, it just probably won't work. Uh, the perimeters that you can change are things like the motion or guidance scale, or uh, things coming up in our next section, which is the latest edition and is really, really cool. And that is dash camera. Dash camera is the latest function in the Pika toolbox. And it is really cool because it gives you a lot of control over the camera movement. So for example, taking our Batman animated output from earlier and adding in a dash camera pan up and left, which you can do, you can add multiples in there as long as they're not conflicting like up, down or left, right, um, we get this, which is a pretty cool movement. It works really well with landscape type images. Like this is uh, obviously a very uh, 80s anime Ghibli kind of magical castle. Um, and then adding in a camera of up and right gives us this. Actually, there's some really nice parallaxing with the trees in the foreground um, as the camera turns. This is, yeah, it's really, really nice. This is our previous cleansing breath output with all of our negative prompts and then adding in a zoom out and we get this, which is really, really lovely. Sway Molina tested out some camera moves and gave us this, which actually, if I look at this for too long, I get a little nauseous, but you can see that it works pretty well. Tiber White created this kind of treeception effect, which is actually really cool. I could see this being utilized in, you know, a Nolan-esque film. Overall, I think the camera controls in Pika are going to be a pretty big deal. As you can see in this video that Steve Mills did, we have the ability to now really truly explore a location or space. On the last page of the PDF, I have collected some advice from members of the Pika community. It does begin with mine, which is uh, roll a number of times, at least three times on one prompt before you move on, because Pika does tend to get better as it generates the same prompt over and over. Once you actually hit the third one and you're still having problems, you can hit this remix button and then begin adjusting your prompt from there. I'm not gonna read each one of these because you know it, the text is there, but uh, Tiber White, who we saw earlier with Treeception, uh, had some advice on prompting to the bot 
as a explain it to me like I'm five. Tom Blake has some advice on motion controls. Crystal Wizard in the Pika Discord had some advice on prompt length. And Microphonist also on the Pika Discord had some advice on negative prompting as well as a prompt formula that gave us this video. So all that advice is definitely worth reading through. Again, you can download the PDF over on Gumroad. It is completely free. So hopefully you found that helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or you can swing by the channel Discord. That is also linked below. I thank you for watching and I thank our supporters for supporting. My name is Tim.